years of praying to all the saints in heaven for a few drops of rain, the inhabitants of California found themselves unexpectedly grappling with devastating floods brought by Tropical Storm Hillary last August, which also hit Mexico, Arizona, and Nevada. The deluge triggered by Hillary caused widespread flooding and torrents of debris with mud flows, boulders, and trees destroying homes and businesses and engulfing motorists. To put it into perspective, the Desert Death Valley received more rain in one day than it typically gets in a year. This was absolutely extraordinary because hurricanes rarely hit California. The first one struck its shores only in 1939 and the last one occurred in 1997, more than 25 years ago. However, one thing is certain, most of the storms that have reached the Golden State, as California is called, have occurred when another cyclical force of nature known as El Nino was in full swing. El Nino is not a new phenomenon and its study has evolved over time to the present day. It's not an ocean current or one-time nature's whim. El Nino is a cyclical event capable of altering the climate and many other parameters worldwide. According to experts, following the initial signs also reported by the Copernicus Mission Monitoring System, a complex Earth satellite observation program launched in 1998 by a consortium of space agencies, we can now say that El Nino is returning. And it's likely to be a grand return because its disruptions could combine with the ongoing climate change. The fear in particular is that a very strong El Nino event in 2024 could make it the hottest year ever recorded on our planet. Keep watching if you want to know more. El Nino is a climatic phenomenon that occurs every few years in the Pacific Ocean. It is characterized by abnormal warming of the surface waters off the western coast of South America, which causes changes in atmospheric circulation and affects the climate in many regions of the world. El Nino can lead to droughts, floods, storms, fires, and other extreme weather events. Many years ago, this phenomenon was less violent because it occurred on a planet with lower temperatures and not yet deteriorated by the climate crisis. Now the story is different. We can't expect new heat records, although it's difficult to predict what will really happen. But how does El Nino form and what are its consequences? To understand this, we first need to know the standard conditions of the Pacific Ocean. Under normal conditions, the trade winds, the ones that pushed Christopher Columbus's ships from Europe to America in the Atlantic, blow from east to west, pushing surface waters towards Asia and Australia. This creates a pressure difference between the two sides of the ocean, higher pressure in the east and lower pressure in the west. This difference strengthens the trade winds, which in turn pushes even more water westward. This creates a circular current called the Walker Cell. The Walker Cell has two main effects. On one hand, it cools surface waters in the east, promoting the upwelling of deep, nutrient-rich waters that support marine life and fishing. On the other hand, it warms surface waters in the west, creating a warm water mass called the Warm Pool, which extends from Indonesia to the Central Pacific Islands. This warm water mass heats the air above it, creating clouds and rain. However, every now and then the trade winds weaken or change direction, allowing the mass of warm water to shift eastwards. This marks the beginning of El Nino. El Nino disrupts the Walker Cell, reducing the pressure difference between the two sides of the ocean and further weakening the trade winds. Warm water spreads towards South America, suppressing the upwelling of deep and nutrient-rich waters, leading to a decrease in marine life and fishing. So one might wonder, why be concerned about a phenomena of local significance that only affects the west coast of South America? Unfortunately, things are not quite so. It is now established that El Nino has global effects, altering atmospheric circulation patterns and influencing the climate in other regions. For example, El Nino can lead to milder winters in North America and Europe, but also more storms in California and the Gulf of Mexico. El Nino can intensify hurricanes in the eastern Atlantic while reducing them in the western Pacific. Additionally, El Nino can impact agricultural production, human health, biodiversity, and the economies of many countries. Furthermore, the tropical Pacific Ocean is so vast that a surface temperature increase of just 1 or 2 degrees is more than sufficient to disrupt the global climate. 
A slightly warmer ocean evaporates more water, heating the atmosphere and fueling tropical storms. Convective movement, a way heat is transferred, typical of fluids, then carries this additional energy towards cooler regions to the north and south on both sides of the equator. The Earth's rotation also spreads this energy towards the east. The net result is a widespread redistribution of heat and moisture. In climatic terminology, El Nino is an excellent example of the teleconnection of global weather systems. Before moving on, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our daily videos. The warm current of El Nino can typically last from 9 to 12 months, but it's not uncommon for its cycle of activity to persist for up to 18 months. It usually peaks between December and February, but can occur at any time of the year. El Nino was named in the 19th century. At that time, fishermen in northern Peru noticed that almost every year, around the end of December near Christmas, there was a rise in seawater temperature. They attributed this warming to the arrival of a warm ocean current, which they named the El Nino Current, in reference to the child Jesus. El Nino is Jesus in Spanish. For them, and still today, it's a matter of economic survival. The vast, gleaming shoals of anchovies, on which their livelihood depends, prefer colder waters and disappear when El Nino arrives. However, beware. El Nino is not an isolated event, but part of a natural cycle called the ENSO, El Nino Southern Oscillation, which alternates between warming, El Nino, and cooling, La Nina, phases of the Pacific Ocean. La Nina is the opposite of El Nino. It occurs when the trade winds are stronger than usual, pushing more cold water eastward and more warm water westward. La Nina has climatic effects opposite to those of El Nino. For example, La Nina can cause colder winters in North America and Europe, but also more rain in Indonesia and Australia. What perhaps hasn't been emphasized enough when discussing global warming in recent years is that the values recorded in 2022 and 2021 are very close to absolute records but occurred in years cooled by La Nina, and they are still warmer than years marked by El Nino, even very recent ones. So, El Nino is indeed a complex and fascinating phenomenon that shows us how climate results from a delicate balance between the ocean and the atmosphere, and how variations in one part of the world can have repercussions in another. El Nino also challenges us to better understand the mechanisms that regulate climate and predict its future changes so that we can adapt and mitigate its negative impacts. But why are we telling you all this? The reason is simple. According to hundreds of experts, in 2024, the world could witness an unprecedented climate event that could have catastrophic consequences for the Earth's climate and life. According to the latest forecast, 2023, and especially 2024, could see a very strong El Nino event, potentially setting a record for global average temperatures and bringing the planet closer than ever to a warming threshold that scientists and policymakers warn could be potentially harmful. According to some estimates, 2024 could be the first year when the global temperature exceeds 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, a threshold considered critical to avoiding the most severe impacts of climate change. This means that the world could experience irreversible effects such as polarized melting, sea level rise, ocean acidification, biodiversity loss, increased infectious diseases, and reduced food security. Furthermore, the strong El Nino event could alter long-term climate patterns, changing the distribution of energy between the tropics and polar regions, influencing ocean thermohaline circulation, and modifying biochemical cycles of carbon, nitrogen, and water. These effects could have repercussions on biodiversity, agriculture, drinking water, human health, and global security. The catastrophic consequences of surpassing the 1.5 degrees Celsius threshold are numerous and interconnected. Some of the key ones are the melting of polar ice in high-altitude glaciers, resulting in sea level rise and the loss of habitat for many animal and plant species. It is estimated that with a temperature increase of 1.5 degrees Celsius, sea levels could rise by about 0.4 meters by 2100, while a 2 degree Celsius increase would result in a 0.6 meter rise. This would put coastal populations and infrastructure at risk, exposing them to phenomena such as erosion, saline intrusion, flooding, and storms. 
Ocean acidification occurs when carbon dioxide absorbed by the water forms carbonic acid, lowering the ocean's pH. This process harms marine organisms that form calcium carbonate shells or skeletons, such as corals, mollusks, and crustaceans. Loss of terrestrial and aquatic biodiversity occurs when species fail to adapt to climate changes and lose their habitats or food sources. With a temperature increase of 1.5 degrees Celsius, 6% of insects, 8% of plants, and 4% of vertebrates could lose more than half of their climatic range by 2100. With a 2 degrees Celsius increase, these percentages would rise to 18%, 16%, and 8% respectively. Increased infectious diseases occur when climate change promotes the spread of pathogens or vectors such as mosquitoes or ticks. According to a recent study, a temperature increase of 1.5 degrees Celsius will have catastrophic and irreversible health consequences, including the rise of infectious diseases. These diseases can affect both humans and animals, causing deaths, disabilities, and healthcare costs. Reduced food security occurs when climate change reduces the availability and quality of food, both directly affecting crops and livestock and indirectly affecting supply and distribution chains. With a temperature increase of 1.5 degrees Celsius, global wheat production could decrease by 2%, while a 2 degrees Celsius increase could lead to a 7% decrease. Similarly, global maize production could decrease by 7% with a temperature increase of 1.5 degrees Celsius and 12% with a 2 degrees Celsius increase. This would jeopardize food security and nutrition for millions of people. Another grim consequence of a particularly strong El Nino is the increase in diseases. Viruses replicate more rapidly in vectors like mosquitoes as temperatures rise. Mosquitoes also bite more frequently in the heat. Heavy rains create more breeding sites for insects, as does drought when people collect more water in accessible containers. Research compiled by the World Health Organization found that drought conditions associated with El Nino over two decades increased malaria cases in Colombia and Venezuela by more than a third. A strong El Nino in 1997-1998 was linked to major malaria outbreaks in Ethiopia, Kenya, and Uganda. This year's heavy rains and floods have exacerbated Peru's worst-ever dengue epidemic, overwhelming hospitals in the north. Flooding can lead to poor hygiene, causing an increase in diarrheal diseases. Displacement and overcrowding following a disaster exacerbate these epidemics. If the Horn of Africa were truly soaked in rain, a surge in cholera cases is likely. Malnutrition worsens vulnerability to diseases, especially among the young and the elderly. Save the Children, a charity argues that the upheaval brought by the 2015-2016 El Nino left an additional 6 million children malnourished worldwide, three times the number affected similarly by COVID-19, and the pandemic has left healthcare services overloaded and weakened. These aren't just a few examples of the catastrophic consequences that could result from exceeding the 1.5 degrees Celsius global warming threshold in 2024. These are scenarios we can't afford to face, neither environmentally nor socially and economically. That's why it is urgent to take action now to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and limit global warming to a maximum of 1.5 degrees Celsius. Only then can we safeguard our planet and our future. How can we deal with El Nino? El Nino is a natural phenomenon that we cannot prevent or control. However, we can try to monitor its development and prepare for its effects both individually and collectively. To monitor El Nino, we can use various observation and prediction tools, such as satellites, ocean buoys, climate models, and statistical indicators. These tools allow us to track the evolution of oceanic and atmospheric conditions and anticipate the impacts of El Nino on different regions of the world. To prepare for its effects, we can adopt various adaptation and mitigation measures, such as water resource management, crop and livestock protection, disease and disaster prevention, international cooperation, and humanitarian assistance. These measures enable us to reduce the vulnerability of populations and ecosystems to the negative effects of El Nino and take advantage of the positive opportunities it can offer. However, these actions are not sufficient if we do not address the root causes of climate change, which makes El Nino more frequent and intense. 
To do this, we must reduce greenhouse gas emissions and promote sustainable and resilient development. Only in this way can we prevent events like El Nino from becoming increasingly dangerous for the future of the planet and humanity. Regardless of how it turns out, what is certain is that we will not be able to cope with the nightmarish temperatures we will face next year. For those, there is nothing left to do. It will be a hellish scenario.